Welcome back to Blast Guys Reviews. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the new G.I. Joe Classified Scrap Iron and Anti-Armor Drone. With that being said, this is going to be a deluxe review. We're going to take a look at Scrap Iron, his Anti-Armor Drone, a couple crossover pieces that you may know about, you may not, and we're going to do some comparisons. Just give you guys a good idea how, what the size this drone really is. Um, when I first picked this box up, it was quite heavy. I was actually surprised how heavy the box was. But for you package collectors, here's the front of the box. Decent artwork there. I love it. Looks like he's on the Joe Bays. Some Sky Strikers in the back. That looks pretty nice right there. It's a nice scenery. It's like he came out of the back of the truck like when he first released the bats. Nice throwback, if that's what they're going for. And I think we have the G.I. Joe base there in the back. Here, top corner. We do have the uh, all the accessories, I think, that's included. Sometimes they miss one or two, but we'll find out. Our work of scrap iron. The classified logo, the insignia, the warnings, the Hasbro logo, all that good stuff. And remember, guys, if you have little collectors, these do have small parts, so be very careful. And on the back of the box, this is scrap iron. Scrap iron is six. Two, he has a helmet, a pistol, a remote control, obviously the drone, a set of blast effects, um, and a couple of missiles. Um, I really like these little uh, parts to show off the little details of the figure. He gets a nice touch. And there's Scrap Iron's head sculpt. At the bottom, we don't care about anything, but really, take a look at the stats. Other than that, this is number 74. In the series, and here at the top of the box, it's the bottom of the box, and there's the UPC if that helps you out at all. Artwork on the side of the box is pretty nice. I do like the art on this set? It has this controller in his hand, never number 74. Like I said, this size kind of like just a half a so co weight insignia. There's a scrap iron number 74 QR code. Those stats. On that side, it's a bunch of hoss paws and stuff. And here's Scrap Iron straight off the box. Like I said, first impressions like the drone looks bigger than I expected. There it is, packaged right beside Scrap Iron's figure. Looks pretty good. And we do get this uh, larger, more of a deluxe size cardboard generic crate. Uh, has a nice Cobra Insignia on it. You can cut that out, maybe use it for something. The box is really thin. Has a 74 on it, and then this box is quite heavy. You can see where half the weight is coming from. So there's a scrap iron, the armored drone there on the box. Of course, it's upside down because there's the handle, and <laughs> it doesn't work out. I don't think they look at these boxes very well. But we'll be taking a look at all the stuff inside here very soon. First up, we're going to take a look at the man himself, scrap iron. Um, it definitely, I think. I'm a big old school um, design uh, kind of collector, but I do appreciate taking the old school stuff. You can tell who they are from the original, but modernizing it very tastefully. And I think this is one of the figures they've done that to, in my opinion, especially when we get to the drone. We'll talk more about that. But for the figure, I think they did a good job, such as the battle damage on his face inside of his head showing off you know some of his uh not too successful experiments with his uh inventions so taking a look at that mug he on the face here it's like he is maybe blind in one eye now several scars on his side here i think they've done it pretty decently uh, we have a cut on the lip it is like he's you know very uncomfortable and then here on this side, we get around to the massive scar. So sometimes explosive, his flesh was melted in some type of explosion. Or maybe even a chemical incident. We don't know exactly because we have no file card. And if we did, it probably wouldn't say much besides 16 different languages. His ears are a little disformed there. Oops. But that's a pretty nice look at the uh, profile. The back... Um, no damage on the back of his head, so at least he doesn't fall bump his head. On this side, we do have this couple scratches across, uh, scars across the uh, side of his head. And then he has his 
like light brown hair, kind of a mohawk style. Probably can't grow hair here any longer because of the damage done. So he just got the best option for his style, <laughs> nonetheless. Um, definitely he has a stack vest. So we have two different types of reds here, like a brighter red here, more of a maroon here. So you have the gunmetal connector pieces here and here, black grenades, non-removable black pouch. That looks really good. Uh, the overall layers and textures of this figure on his vest looks decent. It's not, it's a running um, sculpt. It's a multiple different directions. Like this looks like this where you can actually slide elastic bands. You can slide parts, knives, screwdrivers, whatever into there. Um, I have some of this thing for my 19 scale joy toy stuff, which I think the only person actually has done that. And that's an incredible feature for an Ash figure. You can see he has a red shirt underneath his, uh, his outer dark really dark navyish color shirt this arm there's really nothing on it and he has a black glove kind of all detailing there on this uh shoulder he does have the cobra insignia and then uh does have black pads like elbow pads here on the back it's hard to tell because it kind of clashes with the dark blue but just black elbow pads here's the back of his vest so got a little bit of paint there. So this is how I was talking about. This is like a running this uh, sculpt. And it's just straight down, but it's on the front. It's not like that, but it does carry over from the bottom to the back. So that's pretty cool. Um, you just have a bell heart, belt slash just the iPad harness. I'm not a fan of these uh, connector pieces here, um, because they do get in the way of the articulation, especially with GI Joes. They we are huge on uh, vehicle play sets for GIGS what they are um, yeah we only have so many vehicles so far but I have a funny feeling that in the future we will be having many options like if we have a trouble bubble which we are getting um, let's see how well that happens in articulation if that's um, the plastic soft enough but we have the maroon belt it's like a dark bronze type buckle some black there the straps uh, we have the bronze here on its connectors we have pistol case just a strap around the back of his legs his back pockets are actually sculpted on I got a little piece there some studs sculpted you can see the line work and on on the pants sculpt black knee pads that matches elbow pads they have his black boots and then we have these red pieces that go from the inside out over the top Pretty cool. Some little tread on his feet. Looks pretty decent. So it's gonna get the articulation taken care of to see how well he's articulated, especially with that head sculpt. So um not so much up. We can get it down side to side. Obviously we got that 360. And then we got inner in betweens, all that good stuff. You possibly want, and I just on the top of the neck, and I believe the base neck has articulation, but it's kind of really tight and really hard to get. You can't get a hold of the articulate, so I'm pretty sure it looks like it's there. Arms on a ball joint, rotate 360. You definitely get the T pose out of scrap iron, no problem. There, bicep cut at the top. Double jointed elbows, uh, my nice bend ratio for those. My joints for all oh, nice and fluent. My copper head was kind of stiff, but that was beautiful there. For the hands, we do have the rotation obviously 360, and I think we have, yeah, we have the down and up on that one. And do we have it in? Yes, oh, that's good. So we have one of each in and out. And down and up. But that, that collar piece here gets in the way a lot. So that's pretty good. So we leave scrap iron showing off his guns. He obviously has chest articulation, but with the vest on, it does it hinders that. Um, so we have a waist swivel 360 all the way around. For us, take a look at the harness restrictions. And oh my goodness, there isn't any. 
that's a massive plus for me. I hate when my figures get hindered by these straps and it's not worth the overall aesthetic. But in this case, that is some nice, perfect plastic. It kind of flows with the figure and it doesn't look like it's going to wear. I can have any plastic wear so you can sip. It's bending without worrying about too much uh, plastic stress marks. So that's really good. The only thing about this is you go messing with that, it does hike up his belt. As you can see, it gets up over his waist piece and then you gotta fight to get it back down every time you get him in that position. So for figure photography, it's definitely gonna be a little bit of annoyance. Um, he has style rotation 360. It's stuck pretty good, but it's there. Double jointed knees, that one's stuck. That one's stuck too, okay. Uh, but you can see double joints, boot cut, I believe, yes. Beat pivot down, pivot up. And then you have the rotation around the ankle, which will give you the side to side and all that other good stuff that you like to see for scrap iron. Um, so, so far he looks good. Uh, let's take my, my copy needs a little bit of heat on the knees, um, so. Other than that, uh, he looks good. Let's take a look and see what kind of accessories Scrap Iron has and uh, in his box. Okay, one of the main things for Scrap Iron is obviously you have to have his helmet. It's over the head helmet. It's not a uh, alternate head sculpt or helmet sculpt. Uh, his is visor. It's black. Cover. Um, stylized insignia there on his helmet. It's a navy blue. It looks black, but it kind of might be a, a very close between black and bluish in it. Some bluish in it. So, short color to go for here. It's like the helmet was trying to get caught on his ears. It does fit relatively nicely. As you can see, Sculpt it looks pretty good And it has a nice fit so it's not going to fall off so That's a good thing and that's the scrap iron we used to seen from the vintage because his helmet was not removable It's only a piece of weapon that he has for uh, as well guns and he has this kind of like uh, modern sci-fi Kind of pistol It's not a bad sculpt. It has a real system on the top it does have a port in the front for blast effects. So that's a good. We need a nice big set of blast effects from Hasbro. Um, yeah, we can go and get other companies, but we need official Judge of Blast Effects Hasbro for a massive set of this all kinds. And he can hold that pistol very nice, very close to the uh, to the body. That's pretty good. Look at the bend ratio on that figure. This is a nice figure. There's no doubt about that. That's pretty cool. Helmet does move a little bit when you're trying to turn the head, so you got to get like the lower part of the head so your helmet ain't on crooked. But that's pretty cool. Not only that he holds the pistol really well, you can keep it on his side. Uh, this person and it has a place for here for it kind of protrudes through the bottom it's got a nice snug fit doesn't seem like it's gonna fall out whenever you um so the helmet moves whenever you uh if it falls over or something on your on your display or if you're playing with him if you got him seated the pistol seated it should stay in there pretty good and here he is with copperhead I think it looks very good um Copper is actually a little taller than scrap iron, which makes sense, but that's how they compare. They look very, very nice together. All right, so let's take a look at the drone. Uh, what really surprised me about the drone was its size. I expected it to be smaller. Like this is my hand, obviously, and this is how big it is. I'm as big as the palm of my hand. It's quite large. Um, we do have some wildside decals or tampos here. P is electronics, serial number. Got the M there, maybe from Mars. 
of a red piece going across there. Here we have the center, the lens, the camera, the um, laser pointer, whatever you want it to be. Anti-tank here on the side, 002 dot. The back kind of looks like a car. Some tail lights, a Cobra insignia sculpt right on there. That's a bronze grill. That's, that's interesting. Here we have, maybe this is some type of antenna or array. Here we have the silver band around it. There's some color right here, like some green. Pretty decent. Those are really interesting about, like I said, about modernizing it and tastefully and by keeping the overall aesthetic from the vintages. This basically was the vintage piece with a tripod that came out the bottom. It was stationary and it doesn't move around, but they have upgraded it and took out the, bot, the tripod and added tank treads, which I think is an incredible upgrade to uh, some modernization of the figure and his overall aesthetic. But they can give you an idea how big that is next to one of the characters. If I can get it to stand. There we go. So it's about half of a figure. Okay, so next up we do have the bottom half, which is the improvement. Well, I don't say improvement, but the upgrade um, to scrap iron. It'd be nice to have options to where if you got the tri uh, tripod and this, that'd been really cool. So we have some tank treads done in gray. They, they kind of look rubber, but they're they kind of feel like a very hard rubber. They do not move, they're stationary. Here's the side, we have that bronze here throughout. The red lenses here on the front, or lights, whatever you want to call it. This side kind of matches. Here's the bottom, the treads, nice sculpted. It kind of pushed in, why that is, I have no idea. Are they articulated, I hope? Yeah, it looks like it, a little bit. I'm gonna be very careful with this. Okay, yeah, so they are kind of articulated, so um, we can do this with them. I'm hoping that this kind of straightens out a little bit. It does. So you can, that does go flat. So you can pull that back like that. I mean, you can, as long as the housing of the rocket uh, launcher itself allows it to back that far to the treads. But I think with the overall slant, slant design, it's going to let you do it. And this is actually a pretty solid piece. So I know what we're going to do here is just snap it into the bottom of this hole but i have a funny feeling once you do that i wouldn't recommend taking that back out oh well, maybe you can sometimes in some of these pieces it's like you don't want to like remove it because it snaps in and you risk breaking the peg or i'm telling you what that is a decent size little drone Let's see if i can get the better camera angle okay there he is there's the side of it the front and we're going to do a comparison with uh, something special here and we'll show you how, give you an idea how big it is for being one pole scale he is quite large and you can see how big he is compared to two Cobra members here with me get a better angle for you guys Good. This is good the articulation and the look of it. So you can get that much of an angle. Sure, if you want to shoot too far to the ground and blow yourself up, that's what happens with in his face. And then you have this side to side motion also. And then while you have that, of course, you have um, these tank treads that can climb over. You know, if you want a nice display. If you have a terrain over just like a rocky area, a mountain area, a quarry, whatever you got on your displays, you can actually put this in pretty unique positions for uh, dynamic um, photography or display. Like I said, what really surprised me is the sheer size of these. You really don't appreciate this. I didn't appreciate it until I have it in hand. These are solid, solid plastic. These are not hollow. These are guided. XO4, kind of like the Stinger. So I bet you, if we had a Stinger, one twelve scale classify Stinger, this probably would be what we get on a missile size. So it's doable. 
And you get two of them. And obviously you have little pegs for the blast effects we'll be taking a look at. Which surprises me also. So I like to have the print on the outside. Which ain't going to do me any good since it's hidden inside. And unfortunately I think they, would, they did it on the same side. I wish they would alternate those. So we could get print, but unfortunately it doesn't get alternated. So they give me like that. And that's how far they sit. Pretty cool. Now, Scrapper does come with his controller. This is like a very high tech Nintendo Switch with some antennas on it. Um, there is like a targeting system. Done in two shades of like red, if you can see it or not. Joystick, a couple of buttons, a little bit of paint would have went a long way for a couple of the buttons. Uh, maybe you know if you want to customize yours, you can. So let's see if you can hold it. Um, yeah, he can hold it. I mean, he probably with that articulation, you probably could get like. A two-handed um, look kind of give you an idea here um, well they, I don't think the hands are made for this but uh, I'd be very careful with any guy your stress marks if you're worried about like keeping your stuff pristine um, that's kind of what it looks like you probably can get two hands but it's it's a stretch and like I said it's gonna definitely uh, be a little bit of a challenge there, but uh, I'll let you guys discover that for yourself. But he looks very cool with his uh, overall controller. Now we do get two um, blast effects for the the illusion of it being fired from the actual housing. You get this smaller one, a nice translucent orange with the white for the smoke bled into the pig. And then you get a longer one. And uh, a little warped, maybe. But you can see the difference in size. And let's see here. He's about almost as tall as scrap iron. Maybe up to his shoulders. Or maybe, uh, yeah, like up to his shoulders. So, And this one's kind of up to his waist. So that's pretty cool. And what we have to do now is we have to remove... Uh, the missiles and we need to peg on which is a very easy and we're going to have to peg this one and we'll do the larger one in the back so we can see both and from my understanding you just pop them in and then you have the illusion that he is tearing up some Joe's anti-tank maybe um, some helicopters maybe some dragonflies but that looks pretty incredible. We don't have anything like this from ever in any judge or line. So that looks pretty nice. Coming at you. Pretty sweet. My smooth scrap iron back. Give you an idea. And of course this is movable. It is very nice piece guess it depends how you put you can move this around there's room to move those around so you can spread them out or whatever whatever you need to do so uh we're definitely gonna these actually have a, a little feature that i'm gonna show you here in a bit so don't forget to uh stay tuned for that if you're enjoying this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel you do love taking a look at our details of all of our figures here on Blast Guys Reviews. What really surprises me is the sheer size of some of these effects. Like you can't really appreciate how big this is. Like this is my hand again. Like I said, it's about fits in the middle of my hand. This is really nice white smoke with the blast coming out of orange. Very cool. And then we have this like sweeping one. Kind of like... like it's the heat here is sweeping out into the smoke. Your blast radius is getting, uh, you know, dissipating for the most part. And then those go, you know, wherever you see fit on the uh, battlefield. 
those are definitely uh, floor pieces. However, um, you want to see that happen. Um, and a few uh, interesting in the back blast, maybe of the figure, maybe something from the the back, or you know the concussion from the front, which is pretty nice. So, but you have options, and you can definitely use these for any of your figures, any of your displays. Now it's kind of like one of a piece, one of a kind piece. I love one of a kind of pieces from toy lines. Like I, it's one thing I love about the George toy figures. Uh, if you watch my videos, we do get these very unique um, pieces here. And like I said, these are quite, uh, quite sizable. This is a very crazy wrapped around orange of a blast effect with a smoke base. It's pretty cool. And uh, here he is there that one down for a second and then we get actually a taller one a very a larger one same scenario but this on a different scale so what i'll do is i'm going to get out get this tank out of for one second and we're going to take a look at how tall these things are versus scrap iron give you an idea of the blast effect size comparisons here so obviously there's a four pieces there and then you have here you have that one First off, like, here's this one next to this one. You see this, the height difference on those. And then obviously next to scrap iron, you can see how much, eh, more than half the figure on the bigger one and about just below the waist on the smaller one. So that's really cool. Those are very nice one of kind pieces. I guess that's what you know, the, for a little tank man, if that's just the impact that this thing makes, you probably can even like maybe attach them to a side of a building. Like this pen, like there's some is artillery like bunker busters that go don't explode till they're inside the tank, inside the building, and then do the damage inside. It's kind of you know controlling your uh, your blast, I guess. So you know you could probably do that. I'm gonna stick them to the side where it's penetrated the the building or your tank. Let's hope we get a mauler one day. That'd be awesome. Very cool. All right, guys. So if you guys didn't know this, uh, this is a very nice uh, piece that goes, uh, or a nice feature, I should say, that goes to Bazooka. Bazooka has joined us. He's taken over the show. Um, and the reason is because we have Bazooka's Bazooka. And What's really cool about this is if you have these two pieces, they do fit for Bazooka's Bazooka. And we'll start with the smaller one. Here's a smaller one. If you can see, it is a slight, nice snug fit. And then I love the heads that come with these missiles. This one's the bare one. Um, then we have uh, this yellow one. This is very cool. And then we have this one, which is my favorite to cut the teeth on it. It's a throwback to Tiger Force. Um, so I think that's really cool. We'll use that one because I love this one. And then you can pick in the missile on the front of here. Like so. And then you have the blast effect for Bazooka. Now that is pretty nice. Um... Thinking through from one figure to from even though it's a Cobra to a Joe and from one figure to another, that we could utilize that in multiple positions. Now, if you want to really get crazy, we can open up the back and we can insert this piece and we can get some pretty. This thing is you, it's not going to fit on the camera, but the black. I wish it was a way to swap that around. Because you think the uh, initial orange should be up front and then the smoke. But you can see how that turns out. But we'll take that out of the back. But just know that option's there for either one, the small one or the longer one. We'll pop this one out. Like I said, this guy really in there. And we'll go ahead and get the uh, bigger one in. And we'll do the yellow one because that's actually my, my... I love the heads of these rockets. They're really nice. And you can see that it's a little warped from the soft plastic, but there you go. I mean, from Bazooka's point standpoint, 
pretty nice. Now I have to like, kind of lean him against the display here because he does get very top heavy, front heavy. So I'm gonna give you an idea of what this looks like if he's holding that rocket launcher. So I know it's not the best presentation, but I mean, you're gonna have to get some kind of stand for that. But that looks pretty sick. You imagine doing that from like one of those Fortnite boats. That was $14.99 at Ollie's. With shipwreck driving and bazooka behind him firing rockets off of it. That might be a cool short. We'll have to see about that. This is definitely why I want uh, extra ones of these. Because like, you can't. The problem is if you want to have bazooka in the same time, you know, scrap iron is firing back and forth at each other, you need additional ones. And it's not worth buying two of these just to get the boss to fix. So there's got to be some kind of solution, Hasbro. All right, so to give you an idea how big this uh, anti-drone is to uh, some of the other features we have here. Here's a Pentoid Air Chariot. Kind of uh, try to get it in the frame here, but uh, give you an idea how that looks for the two. It's pretty good, it's kind of a side view. Now, for all my fellow 118 scale collectors out there, if you're curious on how well this compares to a 118 scale tank, now this is the Megatron crossover transformer one, but it's the same size as the other his tank. My other his tanks are kind of packed away right now, so I have too many of them. So, but this is what they kind of look like together. I can't wait to see what uh, this drone will look like with my classified his tank but this gives you an idea of scale there's an overall side preference it's pretty cool definitely could use it if you really wanted to if a scale didn't buy you that much massive large drone pretty cool and here's a look at a 118 scale cobra commander figure with the 112 scale tech drone so you can see that it is pretty big compared to Cooper Commander. You yeah, pretty much could ride that thing if you wanted to. Pretty nice. All right, well, there he is, guys. I hope you enjoyed this deluxe review from Black Skies Reviews of Scrap Iron and the Inte Armor Drone. I'm impressed. I hear like, some people complaining about this and that, and this and that. And honestly, I don't really have any issues besides a little bit of warpage on my uh, boss effect there for the rockets. Uh, very unique pieces you're getting. Scrap iron is pretty cool. Got to heat him up a little bit, but highly recommend this figure. I think he runs about $44.99 retail. Now, obviously, that's Hasbro's price. I think they're still available as of this video what is today? July 19th, 2023. Uh, $44.99 with Hasbro Pulse. Um, I think they still have them in stock. Um, it's worth it. It's worth the pickup. It's a really cool figure. Um, hope you guys liked this review. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Um, don't forget to check out all my other reviews. Lots of great stuff. More to come. And don't forget, we'll always see you in our next review.